Welcome to Market Matters. I'm Nadia Hassan together with Charlotte Chong and Waylon Tang. Again, you have all the girls today because I think I think we chased the boys away. But um, we, you hear for them eventually. <laughs> they're coming back. Yes. They're, they're coming back eventually. But looking at the market today, another gr sort of green day. We had a very, very good break yesterday and I think a lot of people sort of rested on their laurels. But I think regionally it was that issue as well. So, what, yeah. so we're not just us. So when I look at Reuters today, Asian shares went up again a sea of green today. What happened was uh, a couple of weeks ago when US Federal Reserve say that they are not probably not planning to raise interest rates by the end of this year. And after that, I just saw Asian shares went all the way. Hallelujah, I think is what some people said, but did they really say hallelujah? Yeah, you guys actually were, said it very aptly. So FPM KLCI closed another day up, though marginal about 2.11 points. But it has been on uptrend since October 2nd. So volume of 2.4 billion shares worth 2.54 billion ringgit. So now um, Asian shares all up as well. Japan's Nikkei, Hong Kong's Hang Seng and South Korea's Kospi all up more than 1%. Now if you look at uh, outside of Malaysia, we did have some numbers from our neighbouring country, Singapore. So their third quarter GDP numbers actually came uh, better than expected. So on a year-on-year -year basis for the third quarter, it grew 1.4%. But on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis in the third quarter, it uh, grew 0.1%. But this is still a reversal from a contraction of 2.5% in the second quarter um, of this year. Uh, so the interesting mm. thing about that was that it was better than expected. It avoided the dreaded technical recession, which I think a lot of people were panicking about. What did the monetary authority do after this? Right, so they actually uh, eased their monetary policy. So for them, they actually used the exchange rate rather than the interest rates. So what they did was they actually reduced slightly the rate of appreciation of Singapore dollar. Now, MIDF, in a report today I read, it says that as the Sing Singapore economy relies heavily on exports, as we all know. So this better than expected performance in the third quarter maybe actually giving hints that the global economy is actually um, the slowdown is starting to moderate that means you know a rebound is probably going to happen in the fourth quarter but uh, beyond that we also have some numbers from China so in terms of their um, inflation numbers I mean there is there is risk of defla deflation because their consumer inflation index rose 1.6 percent it's actually a decrease from 2 percent in August so September it rose 1.6% and the producer price index also fell 5.9%. So this is actually 43 months in a row. Now what all this indicates is that uh, you know, slowing growth, a deflationary risk. So um, analysts actually have also said that the central bank, which is PBOC, um, you know, still has room to ease monetary policy uh, further by cutting interest rates and uh, to actually meet the required reserve ratio in the fourth quarter. Well, let's see how that actually pans out for them. Mm. Thanks a lot for that, Waylon. Moving on to our hot stock of the day, we have a little label company called Comar Corp. Um, it's a mouthful of a name, but it actually went up about 32.93% to 54 and a half cent. I think at the highest it reached 55 cent, 2 million shares traded. You know why there was a new, we all know why. Basically, yeah, basically there was a French company called Auto Jean. I know They're you've been practicing take, that, that's yes. why you wanted to say it. <laughs> They're planning to take over this company, but I believe that other than um, Comacop, they're probably talking to a few players in the region. Probably Comaco is not the only player that they are talk talking with. Yeah, so the thing, thing is, so as, as Charlotte was mentioning, Autodron actually went to say that they wanted to buy the subsidiaries of uh, Comacop. Under this particular company, General Labels Labeling M and Sunyar Bahad, subsidiaries actually include uh, some places in Guangzhou, Thailand, PT, which of course is Indonesia. So they want to have all that. But let's, let's, let's be very frank, it's very preliminary. There was no kind of price put on it. Mm -hmm. um, I think they want to go in and do their duty mm -hmm. before anything happens. So yes. the share price, I think it was just a little bit premature. Maybe some people need those little blue pills, but yeah. you know, I think it just needs a bit of a... I think people were just a bit excited for this company because if I looked at this company, it seems to be rather okay. They did some house cleaning last year, which I'm a very big proponent of. Um, but yeah, they, they, I don't know what else is interesting about them though. Actually, we look at the annual report just now, uh, both of us, we figure out that about 60.5% of its revenue is actually coming from China. Yes. And probably that's why Autojohn is very keen to take over this company. Because probably because they want to expand their geographical presence in, in this area of the, of the world. Actually, that's the interesting point about it. We actually looked at Autojohn's website. They're based in Montelimar in France. They actually have big presence in Europe, unsurprisingly. Uh, they do everything, right? They do like perfumes, they do food mm. and, and, other, and pharmacies. Um, they're based there. I mean, look at these numbers that they have. 513 million turnover in euros. Mm -hmm. uh, they produce like 4.5 billion boxes a day and 16 billion labels a year. So why do they want this part of the world? Because we looked at their map, they no Asia. No Asian presence exactly. here. Exactly. So interesting, like, right? But I, I take a look at what Comma Cup do, uh, does. They basically don't have, uh, they don't do folding, folding cartons, which is what Otto John is doing. They do folding cartons for cosmetic products, confectionery, spirits, and also pharmaceutical products. Yeah, so if we're looking at the bright side, right, I think if Otto Jean does like what they see in Comacop, 
it might be a shell essentially because as you mentioned, everything they want I think is the main bulk. But of course this is putting the cart a bit in front of the horse. We don't even know whether they like the suitor yet until they look very, very closely under its skirt. Actually, I take a look but, of the shareholding as well. If uh, this deal were, were to go through, basically they need to talk to CEO um, Kong Hong Wan. And he owns about 8.23% through a private vehicle named IMA State Enterprise and Yuan And also ED owns about 12.43% in Patreon. Everybody will have to talk to everybody. So just any reason why it matters, Comacop, the share price jumped on the news that French company Autogen was looking to buy into its subsidiaries, but it's preliminary, so do not get your hopes up just yet. And of course, ultimately, it'll be all about the base, meaning the price. <laughs> when you see how I can hear Waylon laugh it's in the corner. It's a nice corner. one. Yeah, exactly. So moving on to our stocks with momentum quickly. Uh, we've got two for you, both negative momentum. We're looking at Hayo Enterprise, up about 0.42% to 2 ringgit and 237. Exclusive distributing rice, of course, uh, over 50 brands of well-known Chinese medicine. They are an MLM player. Basically, this company, they have about 61 outlets in Malaysia, which include nine franchise shops. News, um, well, they are planning to open a traditional Chinese medicine in Malaysia by the end of this year to treat diabetes patients. I wonder why just diabetes patients and not others? Maybe maybe it's something to do with the Chinese medicine that they have probably better for diabetes than everything else. But yes, they're actually doing a clinic, so they're actually moving downstream. That's the interesting thing, right? They said they would open more of the clinics if response is good. Now, this mm -hmm. is fascinating for me because I have a kind of a love-hate relationship with MLM. I think it's a bit like if you do it well, you are well, you cannot disagree with Hayo. I mean, look at the fundamentals, so much cash, about 50 million, mm -hmm. borrowings are minimal. But on the other hand, you don't get the good guys too, you know? So sometimes you think that going the Walter White way is actually better than, mm -hmm. than going into MLM. But Hayo, moving into downstream, I, I don't know, what do you think? I think it's pretty positive. Like, um, in fact, the idea of opening up clinics is not new to this company. They are working with another company called Tong Rentang, which is listed in Shanghai and Hong Kong. They have already set up three clinics in Malaysia and it's doing quite good. Okay, so, but would you go? I probably would, given that the brand has been established in 1975, it's an old brand, and I think a lot of clients that has been buying products from them, they pro probably, you know, believe in their products and yeah. believe in their way of doing business. Well, I think you still have to worry about the weakening ringgit though and how it impacts business, but let's move on to our next stock momentum, which is actually Sapura Resources, negative again. It was up about 6.32%, one ringgit at one cent. Of course, when you think about negative momentum, clearly the algorithm thinks that this has run out of steam. So news front, right? They're actually a property segment people. They diversify into property development uh, last year after buying 50% of Impian Bebas from KLCC Holdings and Yuan And they are working with this company on a GDP, on a project that worth about 1.3 billion ringgit in KLCC area. So, but what else is there for the company? You're so excited you dropped your pen. Uh, so, Maybe. what do you call it? It's, it uh, what else about the company, right? They actually had a bad thing in 2Q profit. It dropped due to uh, Highlands costs. Let's not forget these guys do a bit of inviation. They actually build those big hangars that the planes go in. But I think that could be bad for them. What the company say in their latest announcement is that um, challenging economy may actually impact their aviation business and it may result in a possible loss or for the group's full year FY16 results. So, so does that mean when we see the next numbers, you think it might be red? Yes, it, it's, probably, probably. We'll have to see how that actually goes off because, you know, they do have other stuff they do as well. You know, they didn't have any prior experience in property development, but hey, let me be honest, you can actually buy prior, ex, prior experience. So as long as you actually have enough money, that should be no problem. And um, they actually secured a um, 286.5 million from its parent company, Sapura Holdings and Yuan Berhad which own about 51.03% in the company. Speaking of that, right, are you from KL? Yes, I am. Did you see that they were turning down Ampang Mall? Apparently that caused a lot of people a little, of, a little bit of consternation. It'll be interesting but, to see how that actually goes. But okay, just to wrap up, we have two socks today, Hayo, Sapura, both pegged with negative momentum. For uh, Hayo, they're actually going into clinics. Uh, well, let's see whether or not their MLM business will actually survive the tough times. And for Sapura, they are actually also going into property, but let's see whether the aviation will drag them down.